Hello YouTube, I'm coming at you today with something special, a training program that I'm sure you guys are going to absolutely love because it is based off of the most aesthetic time period in the history of bodybuilding, namely the silver era. A time when men still looked like men, when exogenous hormones hadn't destroyed the sport yet, and therefore also a time where the physiques that were available back then can be looked at as something achievable because these dudes were also natural. And if we're talking about silver era physiques, there is one name that must be mentioned. If I asked a hundred gym bros who is the most aesthetic bodybuilder in the history of mankind who is natural, I'm certain that 9 out of 10 times, if they know their history, they're going to tell me Steve Reeves. And that is for a reason. Steve Reeves was a demigod. There are stories of him walking on the beach and people stopping what they were doing to actually just look at him walk by. This is how beautiful his shape was. While you might not have Steve Reeves' genetics, you have the two things that are the most important to get a good physique. One, the ability to put in the work, and two, the smart and intellect to create a plan to get to that goal. When it comes to hard work, I can't do it for you, and even if I could, I wouldn't do it. It's up to you to put in the hours and the years of work it would get to look like Steve Reeves. Keep in mind that Reeves started training when he was 13. He didn't get massive in three months like those TikTok kids. So this is going to be a labor of love on your part. But then when it comes to the plan, this is where I can be of help because I came up with a silver era training program that I believe is going to help you get to that level. Now, when we talk about silver era, we have to talk about the V-taper because this is what made their physique. This is what made them so aesthetically pleasing. It was the focus on certain muscle groups. In this case, it was the shoulders and the lats. If you want a V-taper, that's what you're going to have to focus on. So you'll see plenty of that in that program. Then there's also the core. The core is in the middle of the body. Not developing your core is a massive issue because this is where the eyes go. So you have to have a nicely shaped core and nice abs as well. And then we also can mention the arms. The arms have to be developed. Now, if you know Steve Reeves' philosophy, you know that he was very particular about the way to develop the human body. He thought that everything needed to be in proportion. So your upper arms needed to be the size of your calves. If your arms were bigger than your neck, you're doing something wrong, etc., etc. This is all for the sake of flow. This is what makes the silver era physique. So I'm going to follow these guidelines loosely. I'm not going to stick to them 100% because you'll see that the methodology I employ in this program for you guys is, yes, very related to the silver era, but also has some modern elements to it. And it's the same for the exercise selection. If, you if you're a history buff and you know the training programs of the guys back then, you will see that this program as well contains a ton of the favorite lifts of the time but it also has a good amount of modern lifts because even though we try to replicate a physique that was available 100 years back, we are now with more information and more ability to come up with something even greater. So this is the mix that is going to get you to that Steve Reeves physique. And since I am going to mimic the way the guys of back then train, especially Steve Reeves, it's also a no-brainer that this program is going to be a full body split which was the favorite type of split of back then. The template, while it's not my favorite, is excellent. It's just that I believe that full body is the hardest way to program. You need to actually be pretty good at recovery, at frequency to be able to handle that. But since I'm fairly decent, decent at both, I actually came up with something great for you guys. So this is the way it is going to actually work. It's going to be three times a week, like the greats of back then. And it is going to be, as I said, following the methodology of the dudes of this silver era. So each day is going to be fairly long. It's going to be long sessions, which means that you're going to need to have some work capacity, meaning that this is no bueno for novices. I understand you might be a novice and you look at Steve Reeves physique and you say, I want that. You can, but we're going to take it step by step. For you, I recommend you jump on my Greek statue program that is in the description first and foremost, because it is a great stepping stone to this program. This is way too much for your average novice. You're going to crash and burn. This is mostly going to be for intermediates and advanced lifters. And actually, I made two different programs, which is also going to help us discuss 
the difference between intermediate and advanced in terms of workload, but the two are also available in the description free for you guys. And uh, now that we're going to get into the program, if you want to be able to have a visual representation of the way this would look as run by a bodybuilder, I'm going to, in the pinned comment, include the name of a guy who I personally consider to be one of the most advanced natural bodybuilders in this modern era right now, and also a specialist of the silver era. He himself trains full body three times a week. So if you want to see how someone will actually run that type of program, please go check his page. And if you like what he's doing, you can subscribe to him. His name is Erzoviak. You will be taken aback because one, he's very French. So be mindful of that. It can be a little bit shocking at first. And two, he has a tremendous physique. I can vouch for him that the guy is 100% natural. This is what men, modern men, can look like if they know how to train. And even if they want a silver era physique and you could tell yourself, well, it's impossible. We're not like the men of back then. Bullshit. This guy did it. It is absolutely possible for everyone. You just need to know how to train. So please go check that guy out. Now, let's get into the actual program. Let's start with the intermediate template. The intermediate and advanced templates are fairly similar. It's just that the advanced template has more workload. So you will notice something interesting with the program, and that is that there is no abs training, which is weird because I just told you that the V taper and the focus on the core was absolutely paramount for that silver era Steve Reeves physique. So how come? Well, it's because we're going to run what I call an auto-regulated abs training scheme, meaning that while the abs are not included in the program, you are expected to train them. Those of you who have taken a look at my Zod training program for people who want more mass can also vouch that this is effective, but it can be a little bit confusing. So this is how it's supposed to be run. I don't include sets for abs in the program, but you are supposed to hit 80 to 200 reps per week. So it's per training week. So it's three days a week. You are supposed to do eight to 10 ab isolation sets weekly. So this is where you're going to get your reps. I'm containing them between 8 to 10 so that it gives you a guideline, you know what to do. You are supposed to do no more than 4 per day. So you could do 4, 4, 2. You could do 3, 3, 4. You are supposed to do it for no more than 20 reps per set, but no less than 10. That's why we keep you within a relevant rep range. And you're supposed to always place this set after lower body compounds because I don't want to pre-fatigue your core and your body to stay rigid before a big squat. It would be a recipe for disaster. If you think that this is complicated, please go to the description and read it. It makes a ton of sense. It is very easy. I do that because it's going to teach you how to train, how to instinctively train the muscle groups that need to be trained. This is super simple to actually run and it's going to give you freedom. Freedom is absolutely important when it comes to training and the silver era bodybuilders were big proponents of that as well. When it comes to the exercises I recommend for the abs in particular, decline sit-ups weighted, leg raises weighted, hanging knee raises without weight, V sit-ups without weight and windshield wipers without weight. These for me are the best to develop that silver era core. If there are other abs exercises that you like, you can run them. Just stay within the rep range and the, the goal rep that I set out for you and you should be all good. Now let's look at the actual scheme. The intermediate scheme is going to be three sessions a week for a total of 12 sessions a month and a grand total of 100, 140 and 150 sessions a year. And it starts with the Monday. We are going to begin every single day by the most strenuous exercise because it's what I call the pyramid of priority, which is also a pyramid of intensity if you know what you're doing. When you run a full body split, full body days are long. And if you make the mistake of putting an exercise that is too demanding in terms of energy low, you're just going to sing back because you don't have the energy. So you're going to see that the exercises at the very top are the most important of the day and the ones that are going to give you more tonnage and more fatigue. And the more we go down the list of exercises for the day, the less fatiguing they are and therefore the less quote unquote important. This is a safety, a safety measure I put in place in every single one of my programs because I know for a fact that sometimes you don't have time, sometimes you skip. In this case, always skip the bottom sets, never the top sets, okay? This is the pyramid I set out for you. So in this case, for Monday, we start with squats, barbell or hack, three to four sets of six to 12 reps. So it's going to give you the ability to hit some more intensity or more volume depending on the daily needs. And then we superset that with some seated cable rows or some sill rows 
three to four sets of eight to 15. Since this is a program made by me, of course, no surprise that there are some supersets, but I arrange them in a fashion that I think the Silver Era bodybuilders would also approve of, meaning that it's always a double set. So it's always a superset. There are no giant sets in this program. And even when there are that giant sets, technically, it's a dry set with three exercises. And you will notice that there is an exercise in the list that is always the quote unquote least important. So if you can't run it for a reason or the other, you can always slash it. It's the same logic of priority I apply to this entire program. Then we move on to upper body movement with the incline press, a favorite of Steve Reeves, dumbbell or barbell, whichever one floats your boat, or a machine incline press, okay? It's a machine that is supposed to be pressed not directly upwards, not directly in front of you, but in the middle. It's an incline press. And we're going to do three to four sets of six to 10 reps for this one, superset it with some reverse curls, dumbbell or barbell, three to four sets of six to 12. So right now we hit the quad, the posterior chain, we hit the upper back, we hit the shoulders, we hit some chest, and we also hit the forearms. This is how a good four body split is run. A four body split that is just compounds, compounds, compounds is garbage. A four body split where you eat every single muscle equally is also for the most part garbage. You're going to see that certain days have an emphasis on certain muscle groups. While it's a full body, it does not mean that the entire body needs to be worked equally. This is where recovery actually comes into play and you will see that the more we advance. Then we do Romanian deadlifts or dumbbell bench. This is a bit weird because these exercises have nothing to do with one another. You will do your Romanian deadlifts if you want more posterior chain work, which keep in mind was not a main priority of the silver era. They did not want to load the hips too much. They thought that a big ass was not necessarily the most aesthetic and arm strings were not a priority at all for these guys. But I understand that some of you guys might want to do it. So it's there. And if you want more upper body work, you can do your dumbbell bench. I know that some of you like to train your chest a ton. And if you don't press three times a week, you feel like you're dying. In that case, go ahead, do it. Both of them can be done again, three sets of eight to 12. Then superset that with upright rows, dumbbell or barbell, or lat pull downs, likewise, choice and freedom. Do you want more shoulder work and trap work, or do you want more lats and upper back work? Whichever way works, it's up to you. And you're going to do it for three to four sets of 10 to 15. The first is also three to four sets. By the way, I said three sets, I was incorrect. And then you wrap up the set with some neck curls, four sets of 15 to 20. Please note that this is the only time you train neck in the program because the silver era did not focus on neck at all. They had fairly underdeveloped necks for the most part and training it was not even a priority. It's not, it wasn't even just not a priority. They didn't even actually train neck for the most part. So it's up to you if you want to, it's just those four sets. Then we wrap up the day with some cable curls, four sets of 12 to 15, then some French press or lying triceps extension, four sets of six to 10 and some seated calf raises, four sets of 15 to 20. You have a total of eight sets of calves in this program and these are the first four. So in total for the day, as you can see, we train the posterior chain, the upper back, the shoulders, we train the chest to some degree. We train the upper back again with the leg pull downs, the neck, we train the long head of the tricep, we train the biceps. All of that is complete and we can wrap up that Monday and move on to the Wednesday. You get two days to fully recover. So you get 48 hours in between the two sessions. And the Wednesday, Wednesday is going to open with a barbell row, three to four sets of eight to 10, high rep range. I don't want you to see I don't want to see too much cheating motion and cheating form. That being said, this is a barbell row. It's not a cell row. So you're still supposed to use your legs. This is a total body workout. It's going to, of course, hit the upper back, but also the lower back and posterior chain. Or you could do some good mornings, three to four sets of six to 12. It depends on your goals. Again, the good morning that, by the way, was also a favorite of Steve Reeves. Then you can do some wide grip barbell shrugs or dumbbell shrugs as a superset, three or four sets of 12 to 20, more yoke development, something that is not going to be too taxing, but it's going to match perfectly with the barbell rows or the good mornings. Then we move on to the upper body portion of the full body with weighted dips or close grip bench. Again, these two were utilized by the silver era bodybuilders to develop the chest and to develop the shoulders. So these are foolproof. You can pick whichever one you like best. They're going to serve the same purpose. 
three to four sets of six to ten. Keep in mind that these rotations are not set in stone. So if you're someone who likes both dips and close grip, you could do one one week and the other one the other week. It's absolutely up to you. Then you're going to do some split squats, which is what I hope or expect most of you guys are going to run. Or if you like most some more specialty training types, you can do some Smith machine squats or some Dellinger squats. Dellinger squats were a favorite of Vince Gironda. It's essentially a front squat with your heels elevated by a tiny block or a plate. It's going to be four sets of 12 to 15, so it's going to be very hard to keep the front squat position for that long. But if you're someone who enjoys that type of quad movement, you can absolutely do that. Then we move on to some upper body work and some, some bicep work as well with the weighted chin-ups, three sets of four to six. So I keep you within a small rep range to promote as much intensity as possible without actually risking anything because the rep range is not wide enough for you to fatigue to the point that you're going to fall out of the rep range and potentially start to cheat. Then you do some dumbbell or machine shoulder press, three sets of six to 10. This is if you're someone who recovers fast on the press and wants to get more shoulder work or face post. So I am planning for people who might not be fully recovered, but still want to hit the shoulders. This time you're going to focus more on the real delt, so you'll hit some face pose. Again, it's not set in stone. You might be one week able to recover and you're going to press again for more progression. Then the next week you'll say to yourself, okay, I would like more upper trap and I would like some mid trap and real delt work as well. So I'm going to do face pose instead. Absolutely great. Then you do some leg curls for sets of 12 to 15. In this case, dash the four sets. We're going to do three sets. We're going to match the rest of the set, of course. And on top of that, we want to make sure to quote unquote minimize the posterior chain work, but still get some nice armstring development as well. You're not going to get massive legs from that. Then we wrap up the day with some bicep work. So Pelican cable curls. It's a cable curl I covered in my bicep exercises tier list. You can check out it's on the channel. And you can also do some dumbbell five grips preacher curls if you want it. Four sets of 10 to 15. For the both, it's an exercise with a higher rep range because I absolutely do not want you guys to get hurt on that movement. The goal is to really focus on the stretch. Then some cable pushdowns, four sets of 8 to 15, so more, some more direct tricep isolation, which is the only type of direct lateral tricep isolation of the program because you do a ton of presses, the rest is going to be for the long head. Then some lateral raises, three sets of 15, a static rep range just for some more static added volume to the lateral head of the delt. Again, as you can tell, there's a big focus on the upper back, a big focus on the delt for that silver era aesthetic. After this, the Friday, the last day of the program is going to be peak fatigue because this is how full body works. Full body is a lot of fatigue accumulated at once. So a good full body training program is going to have you do one to two days leading to a third day without actually interfering between the first one and the second two. So this is exactly what is going to happen here. You still train the entirety of the body, but with slight differences that make it so that you're not going to be tired on the Wednesday from the Monday. And when you get to the Friday, the two days prior will not actually prevent you from giving your all. But at the end of Friday, all of that fatigue will be accumulated and then you will need some more rest, which is why after Friday, you get Saturday, Sunday completely free and you start back up on Monday. This is also the beauty of full body splits. Three times a week, it keeps that fire going because you only train three times a week. So you only always have that hunger and appetite to go into the gym and to train more and more and more. And every weekend sort of create, does a power wash of every of all of the fatigue, it's like a deload, quote unquote, it's a three day deload. Then you start back up and you're ready to kill it in the gym again. So the Friday is going to be a bitch, but stick to it because it's programmed in a way that is not going to promote any type of overuse. You start with deadlifts, three sets of three or three sets of one to five. It's absolutely up to you. You could do one set of five also if you want it. This is for more choice and more freedom. Then some cable triceps extension if you want more long head of the tricep work or cable drag curls, three sets of 10 to 15 if you want more bicep work. Then we'll move on to another press, overhead press or behind the neck press, which was also very utilized back then. Three sets or four sets, so it's three to four, of six to 12 reps, wide range so as to promote progression and volume. And you are going to superset that with a movement I had to include in a silver era program, namely the dumbbell pullovers. Three or four sets of eight to 12 reps. You're still going to go heavy and to failure or one rep in reserve on that movement. But I keep you on high rep range because I find that 
When people do low references on the dumbbell pullover, they tend to cheat. They don't go as deep as they could when they go towards the bottom because they're afraid. And on top of that, there is a risk of injury. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. Injury that, by the way, for the most part, happens in the shoulders. It's not your lats that is going to tear or your chest. It's the shoulder because it's the shoulder that is, of course, stabilizing the movement and bringing the arms behind the body. Then some more leg work with leg press to deload the lower back four sets of 8 to 15, and you superset that with some dumbbell or cable chest flies or dumbbell or barbell guillotine press. So for this one, the guillotine press is a little bit like uh, what I said earlier with the Dellinger squats. It's a, it's a specialty of the silver era. Guys back then swore by it, even the golden era to some extent. It's still, quote unquote, a risky lift because there's a ton of internal rotation because the bar is very high on your clavicles but it's absolutely doable. I do them with rings, so maybe you can do them with rings. Four sets of 10 to 15, I keep you high on the rep range so as to make sure you don't actually hurt anything. The goal here is to get some additional chest work because as you can see in the program, there's not much of it. It's still there, but it's not as much as some of the programs would promote. So you still want to get that stretch in, pick the exercise you feel the most comfortable with. Then some hammer curls, some, some more direct forearm and bicep work, four sets of eight to 12. And then to wrap up this intermediate silver era program, the last set for the last day is going to be wide grip pull-ups, a tremendous lats builder that I recommend you do with a false grip or with a fat grip so as to make sure that you don't actually grab onto the bar, but you palm it, which makes all of the difference when the grip is wide, four sets of eight to 12, you will not wait that movement. You will not need to wait that movement. The rest of the program has enough lat and upper back damage that when you get to the Friday, this is the way I program for you guys, this will be enough to fuck you up. Then hyper extensions or GHR, four sets of 10 to 15, some more lower back work and some more glute and armstring work. Then standing calf raises, four sets of 12 to 20. So again, if we apply what I spoke to you about at the start with the pyramid of priorities, look at the last set of every single day. Most of the time, it tends to be redundant muscles you already hit in the program. It's just additional volume. So this program could absolutely be run with none of the last lines of each day actually run. It's possible. It's just that you get less volume. So if you skip the Monday, you'll get less biceps and longer of the tricep and calf volume. If you skip the Wednesday, you'll get less biceps and again, less tricep and some less shoulder volume. If you skip the Friday, you'll get less lats, less posture and less calf volume. Not going to kill you. I'm still including it because more volume done in these rep ranges can be useful. And since you quote unquote only train three times a week, it's still necessary. But if you're an intermediate with poor work capacity, I recommend you run that program without including the last the last three to four sets of each day, and then you graduate to adding these sets as you go on, as you build that work capacity. That is going to be for the type of people who are going to enter this program after having ran something for novices so as to develop their ability to train. But then what about the more advanced lifters out there? Because again, as I quote unquote showed to you in the pinned comment, you can get a very advanced physique running a full body split. It's absolutely possible. So how do you jump from intermediate to advanced? Well, it starts with the auto-regulated abs training. Instead of doing 80 to 200 reps, you're going to do 100 to 240 reps. It doesn't look like much, but it is. You go also from doing only 8 to 10 ab isolation exercise, uh, weekly sets total to 10 to 12. So again, it doesn't look like much, but it is a lot because with the same logic in mind, if you look at the amount of sessions we're doing, the advanced session has you train four times a week. So you train every two days, which technically you train four times every eight days. This again looks like only one session, but if you look at it on a yearly basis, this means that you train four times a week, 15 times a month, 180 times a year. Whereas with the previous iteration of the program, you maxed out at 150 sessions. That is a difference of 30 sessions. It's a difference of three months. You train three more months in total. It's like there were three additional months in the year if you run the advanced program. That is the difference. This is so much more work. Do not underestimate the amount of work capacity and recovery this actually takes. The intermediate program gives you your weekend to fully flush out fatigue. With this, you will not have it. 
I still recommend taking a day off here and there so as to get three days in between, but it cannot become something that is regular because if you do that, you're, still, you're just going to return back to the intermediate program. So this is for the those of you that are close to still Reeves, to the Steve Reeves physique and you just need that extra inch, that extra push of volume F and intensity to actually get there. And this is when this full body split takes its final form. The first three days are the exact same, but instead of resting the weekend, you train on Sundays. You start with weighted dips or close grip bench, four sets of six to 12, plus rowing machine or dumbbell rows, four sets of eight to 12. So you are going to trash your shoulders, you're going to trash your chest and your upper back as well. Then some leg press for additional leg volume or good mornings, if you want more posterior chain, three sets of 10 to 15 or three sets of six to 10, plus seated real dart raises or cable lateral raises. You pick your poison. Do you want more real dart? Do you want more lateral dart? Three sets of 10 to 15. As you can tell, I give you a ton of vol I give you a ton of freedom in this program and options. It's up to you to decide. And this is again the flexibility I was speaking about. Then you do some weighted neutral grip pull-ups, four sets of four to eight to completely terminate the lats, finger curls, four sets of 10 to 12 for the forearm isolation, then some high pulls or snatch grip shrugs, four sets of 15. This is for the yoke again. It's more athletic based if you do the high pulls. It's more hypertrophy based if you do the snatch grip shrugs. Snatch grip shrugs, which by the way, are incredible. If you have never tried them, please give them a try. And then we finish that Sunday, that final day, with some easy bar curls, three sets of eight to 10 for the biceps, inclined seated dumbbell extensions for the long head of the tricep. It's an exercise I covered in my tricep tier list, if you have missed it, three sets of 10 to 12, plus goblet squats or CC squats, three sets of 12 to 15. Pay attention to these, three, to these last exercises. You're supposed to squat heavy on Monday. So if you cannot handle that amount of volume for the quads on Sunday, then move on, sorry, on Tuesday. So in two days, you're supposed to squat heavy. Think about that and tell yourself, can I actually do it? I only gave you three sets of 12 to 15 of low intensity. And these are movements that are not super taxing on the overall structure, but they're still going to damage the muscle fibers in the quads. So you're not going to be fully recovered if you don't have the actual recovery capacity. Now, Onto the topic I just mentioned briefly and that had me a little bit shook for a second. You understand that because you train every two days, you're not going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Monday. That would be idiotic. You do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Monday again. But then the Monday that you train, you understand that is going to be the fourth day instead of the one. So it's an ever rotating training program that always lands on the same days from week one to week two to week three, but with a rotation. And eventually you will get back where the Monday is actually the Monday. The Monday will get back to its proper place. It makes no difference. All you have to know is I give you 48 hours in between, which is not that much. I still manage the progression and I manage the intensity and the volume that you get so as to make sure you have the ability to do so, but it's still going to be a ton of work. But if a Steve Reeves physique is what you really want, you are going to have to put in the work. More work is not always better, but more work done intelligently with enough recovery in between absolutely is. So this is what is going to actually conclude this Silver Era training program video. I hope that you guys have a good time running it. If you have any questions, please do let me know. And it is now up to you to put in the work to get the physique of your dream. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.